Your next Uber ride might just be from George Jetson. The flying future of rideshare is closer than you think, and Uber hopes to get there first. The flying car has been a dream of many since both car and airplane were invented. Now, multi-rotor electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or eVTOL, hope to make the air taxi a reality. Following two high-profile tests, dozens of companies spending billions of dollars are aiming to take your commute to the skies as soon as 2023 in select cities. Just how far has Uber come and how far do they have to go before the Jetsons fantasy becomes reality? After over a century of sci-fi dreams of a world where commuters take to the sky, it's been a busy year for those trying to make that dream a reality, and rideshare giant Uber is making big investments to be at the center of it. Back in January, at the Consumer Electronics Show, Uber partner Hyundai unveiled a flying taxi concept capable of taking four passengers up to 60 miles at speeds of 180 miles per hour. While you wouldn't be summoning a multi-rotor aircraft to pick you up from your doorstep, the concept would fly from hub to hub, connecting to airports or suburbs to cities. While there have been short distance craft concepts before, few of them have been from companies that have manufacturing prowess like Hyundai, who make everything from economy cars to cargo ships. Hyundai has what seems like modest plans compared to other timelines of having their air taxis in service by 2028 by the latest. But a static concept is still just a static concept but two high-profile tests have put those concepts to the test. In Japan, a company named SkyDrive managed a successful test of a manned multi-rotor craft in a sustained but controlled flight, one of the first of its kind. In November, the stakes got even higher when the South Korean K-Drone took a test flight in the Seoul skies. Since it wasn't in the controlled space of the SkyDrive test, this flight was taken by a couple bags of rice, but remains a big step forward for the coming reality of air taxis. For its part, South Korea is all in on the air taxi, investing $22 billion through 2022 on building out not just the flying taxi, but the necessary infrastructure and safety protocols to make the taxis viable and safe enough to use. That big investment is justified by their own estimate that the segment will reach a lofty $1.2 trillion, that's trillion, I said it, by 2040. For its part, Uber isn't waiting for Hyundai or even South Korea to sort out the short distance commuter aircraft market. Just like Uber didn't buy a fleet of taxis, they're not making their own craft, but rather entering into multiple partnerships, investing major companies and startups alike to build out a fleet of eVTOL. That's electric vertical takeoff and landing craft. Alongside Hyundai, they're also partnered with companies that have a long history with rotocraft like Bell Helicopters. Other major partners include Embraer, Pipistrel, Karam, and Aurora Flight. Getting all these craft in the air is one thing, making sure that they don't run into each other or anything else, that's another. So Uber has reached out to companies like GE to build the necessary infrastructure and safety controls. For Uber, this isn't some vague distant future. They've already selected three cities to begin pilot programs to test the concept. In 2023, Los Angeles, Dallas, and Melbourne will host early test programs for Uber's air taxi service called Uber Elevate. In these early stages, the service will resemble the helicopter service that Uber already operates, Uber Air, that offers helicopter rides from New York City to JFK Airport for around $200. Uber is up against the clock to be the first to start offering flying taxi services, as other companies have partnered with other cities to start building the necessary infrastructure to begin offering short-hop flying services. German company Lilium has released plans for a $25 million hub after $800,000 in tax breaks from Orlando with first flights scheduled for 2025. The 56,000 square foot Vertiport would launch Lilium's 36 motor eVTOL capable of 186 miles per hour, hoping to connect Orlando to Tampa. Like Uber Elevate, potential passengers will be able to book their flights via a phone app. Currently, the prices for a flight in Lilium will be akin to a first-class airline ticket, which is just one of the challenges that these ambitious plans face. While 2020 has screwed everything up, the air taxi race is still underway. However, the Japan and South Korea tests aside, the over 80 companies working on or investing in the air taxi have a fully tested model, yet much less one that can be certified for commercial passenger travel. While tech companies have adopted disruption as their mantra, airspace for very good reasons is highly regulated. 
These companies will have to work out safe air routes that not only prevent the craft from encountering each other, but maintain the safety of the people below them. On that front, manufacturers point to the multi-rotor system as part of the safety element. With as many as 36 motors working to keep the craft in the sky, if one fails, the others can take up the slack. Failing all that, most craft are equipped with a parachute that will bring the craft to the ground gently. Though no matter how gently it lands, whatever it lands on probably would object. The ideal of the air taxi is to alleviate the problem just about every urban center faces. Congestion. In densely packed cities, even short commutes can take sometimes hours with all those cars on the road inching along contributing to air pollution. With the EV tall craft using electric power in the open sky, they hope to eliminate both time and pollution in people's commutes from the outer city areas to the city centers. In addition, developers insist that once the crafts reach 400 meters, they'll be virtually silent with takeoff and landing, with about as much noise as a passing truck. But if the price is too high, then the air taxi becomes a luxury for the affluent, but in the end does little to alleviate congestion. And that's if there's enough affluent people available to fly over the pores to make the massive air taxi investment viable. To make Uber Elevate viable for both consumers and Uber itself, Uber has set a target of $250 a mile, roughly equivalent to a ride in a luxury Uber ride. One of the hurdles in that regard is that these early pilot programs will require pilots. All of the air taxi companies are working on autonomous flight systems, but no city is going to let both the concept of flying taxis and autonomous flight be tested simultaneously. Down on terra firma, the autonomous car is reaching almost a decade in development with the best consumer application so far being a car that kind of awkwardly parks itself and remains in its own lane on the freeway. In a way, autonomous flight in the air faces fewer challenges. If the AI detects an obstacle, it avoids it. There is no such thing as a pedestrian in the sky or complex elements to read like traffic signals and speed limits. But it's still maneuvering through three-dimensional space with people on board and below. First things first, these craft have to take off, fly to their location, and land all the passengers in one piece. For that step, you need pilots, and the pilots will have to be employees, not partners. Uber's preferred method of keeping costs down. The other hurdle is building the infrastructure, which means the vertiports and hubs for the craft to come and go. Naturally existing airports are at the center of early plans with services of hoping to connect commuters from cities and suburbs to airports that are notorious for their congestion. That comes with its own challenges with preventing the short range craft from getting in the way of long range craft as well as accompanying landing fees that every other craft would face. Should these loft plans come to fruition, they would dramatically reshape our living space landscape similar to the way the automobile did in the 1950s. Since the suburban boom that accompanied the automobile and manufacturing boom after World War II, there has been a slow return to urban centers as lengthy commutes and heavy traffic have taken their toll on people who still have to work in the city centers. Remote working hopes to decentralize workforce and reduce the pressure on traffic infrastructures, but there remains some work that requires a physical presence. A rapid and affordable way to commute into the city or other central points would allow for populations to spread out once again, relieving both pollution concerns as well as rising costs involved in impacted cities like New York and Los Angeles. Should these hurdles get cleared, analysts believe there is gold in the skies. Morgan Stanley estimates that by 2040, the air taxis could be a $1.5 trillion industry, which is in line with South Korea's estimates. That figure is attracting a lot of big money investment, not just from Uber, but across the globe. South Korea is already using eVTOL in a limited capacity for cargo transport and emergency services, and is in the driver's seat expanding their service. Japan has invested heavily in eVTOL as a national industry, creating a government commission that brings together designers, builders, and regulators to fast-track eVTOL not only to alleviate congestion, but to also connect remote smaller communities to their city centers to provide services geography has hindered. The initiative received a massive $394 million boost from Toyota, with Tokyo having plans for a 2023 launch for an air taxi service. Unlike the other ambitious plans, the Tokyo service will be built off the SkyDrive concepts, which has had a successful manned flight. Are you ready for the next taxi ride to take you to the skies? What would an air taxi need to have you book your next ride to the airport or city center? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, make sure to subscribe to The Richest, and we'll airlift the latest videos to your inbox.